Hello, and welcome to another edition of Kraken Cryptic. Um, today we're going to take a look at a puzzle that appeared on the site gmpuzzles.com. Uh, gmpuzzles.com, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, is um, a fantastic site full of uh, handcrafted puzzles. So, puzzles prepared by humans rather than machines. Um, I think uh, Tom Snyder, former World Stoku champion, multiple World Stoku champion, um, was the guy who created the site and now runs it. And every day they release, or every week they release, uh, a series of new puzzles which are all very good fun to solve. Um, now, we're going to take a look at this Sudoku, which apparently is a reasonably difficult uh, Sudoku by Sir Um And one of the nice things about gmpuzzles.com is you can really gain uh, an insight into how your own sort of speed solving is uh, coming along because for every puzzle, um, I don't know if we'll be able to show you this, I'll try. Um, you can see here they have time standards which I've highlighted here. So you can see that if you're a grand master Sudoku solver, you should be finishing this puzzle in 4 minutes 15 seconds. Um, if you're just a master, 6 minutes 30, an expert solver should still take 13 minutes to solve this. Um, which gives you an idea of how hard they think it is. Um, I can tell you any Sudoku that takes Tom Snyder 4 minutes 15 seconds must have um, something quite complicated about it. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to look at it. Uh, I'm not going to speed solve it. Uh, if you want to speed solve it, you're very welcome. There you go. You can see it, see it on the, uh, on the screen there. So copy it down onto note paper. Use your stopwatch, see how you do. Uh, we're going to solve it logically. There you go, I put it into my software which allows me to make pencil marks here. Um, and right, let's see how we get on. Okay, I can see we can place four immediately here. See, we can place this six here and this six here allows us to place a six here and a six here, which is nice. One five nine now needed along here. Normally, I wouldn't look at that, but um, sometimes when you get six numbers in a row or column very early, it's worth worth just checking whether you can use them to do anything helpful. Um, some more ones we can pencil mark here. Always conscious that this is our. Oh, there's a nice thing. So there's a three one here and a one three here. That actually allows us to place these. If we'll find this double here, this one three combination, um, so that would give us anything immediately. We can now use this eight sliding here and here like that. Six and this six. It's going to give us a big six up here, uh, which is going to be very nice in terms of pencil marks. These two have to be sixes now, and also give us this seven. Um, which annoyingly, I don't think it's going to give us anything more. We can again; these little blocks are forming here. This will all be deliberate as well. One of the beautiful things about the puzzles that you appear on gmpuzzles.com is that they, they tend to have a very um, linear solution path. So a solution path that the setter intends you to find. So it's a, a series of logical steps which you wouldn't normally find with a, a machine puzzle. Um, so you can see this two and this two here allows to place these two to find this two four double now and now we've got eight and nine into these two squares nine and eight in that order allows us to place a nine here gives us the eight here so we're two five into these two squares but we don't know quite how that's going to resolve itself but that resolves this two four combination um, 
So at the moment it's, it's going relatively okay. So here we need to place a 5 in column 8 and we have a 5 here, so we place the 5 and the 4 and make a pencil mark 5 into these two positions. else there. So down here we need 1, 2 and 8. You can see only only got an 8 over on this side of the grid. But this square here could be a 1 or a 2 so we should try and remember that as we're working through the solve. Um, this 9 here so again using this sort of configuration in this this box here we can use this 9 to give us a couple more pencil marks. Two, nine, okay. Mm. Four over this side. Ah, okay, so we have sevens here and a seven over here. Forces the seven in this top box to be in the top row. And because this can't take a seven, because this is part of this one, three double combination. We can place the seven into this position. Uh, and resolve that. That allows us to make a couple more pencil marks here. And this square here, obviously, this can only be one or a three. I don't think we can go further with that. Just at this second. We have a two here and a two here. So we can lock the twos into this position, which gives us a couple more numbers. For example, this two five combination. The plane going past outside. Probably hear that. Sorry if it's distracting. Uh, okay, now we can mark pencil fives into these two positions. Okay. Just had a webcam crash, so hopefully that's not uh, not clear on the video. Um, Got this four here, which means we can we can place a four in a couple more positions. This four here, and this four here. And that would be sixes. So we can put a six in this middle box there. And a six up here, and that's going to give us a six down here and a three here. So far, it seems okay. The puzzle doesn't seem to have required any great feat of solving prowess just yet. I suspect it will at some point. Um, six, six. Ah, now if we look at um, this column. Column four. We need to place a nine in this column somewhere. You can see there's a nine here, so it can't be in this position. And there's a nine here, so it can't be in this position either. So the nine must be here. Uh, okay, which leaves us with five eight to place. No way quite to resolve that yet. One, three, five, seven. Ah, yeah, okay, so column one, we need to place a one. Can't be here, because of this one. Can't be here, because of this one. It can't be in the bottom. So we're only left with one position in column one where we can place a one. And that's here. And that's going to be huge, because that will immediately by this notation gives me three into this position, which gives me a three here as well. Box a three into one of these two cells. But more importantly, perhaps this one here is working its magic on this central grid. So this this has to be a one, and this has to be a five. Let's remove the one from this square. 
let's just see if this five really uh, helps us. You can see it allows us to make those two pencil marks. Can't quite see if we can go further than that. Ah, and this nine here now is locking the central box up. So that has to be a nine now. Yeah, I think that's right. And then this gives us two seven two seven here. We have to place an eight in the central row. Let's do that. A one two around the outskirts here. So that's a one and that's a two. Um, that's a two. This is a two. Eight nine into these positions. Oops. Like that. Sure, I'm not overlooking anything. Ah, oh, this eight here allows me to pencil mark the eights into those two positions. Ah, this one here means we can put one into one of these two positions, which allows us to put this has to be a one. Two, five, nine. I suspect this is going to end up in some very difficult final uh, final piece, which will appeal to those of you who enjoy the um, sort of logical end games of these uh, Sudoku puzzles. Um, this is one, five, seven. Pencil marks up here. I'm not sure whether it will help us um, place eights into these positions and five into those positions. Ah, okay, so there we go. Interesting. This box here one can only go in this position. The five, the seven, and the eight, which are the other numbers that we still need to place in this three by three box, are all forced by various numbers around the grid to not be in this square. Uh, so this has to take a one. Move that one there, that results. This is a one, this is a three. Now, I have to pause the video here for a couple of minutes to stare at this um, because I couldn't see a way of immediately making progress. I suspect that this is why this puzzle was tricky. Um, but I have, there's a couple of things we can talk about here um, in terms of a way of making uh, logical progress with the puzzle. Um, now, to do that, I'm going to have to, I think, abandon. Um, the Tom Snyder notation slightly because I think it's going to um, hamper what I'm about to try and explain. So I believe that this software would allow me to just highlight all the possibilities. So let's just scroll this and see if this works. Yeah. And what we need to, to now look for is numbers in the grid that have like a high degree of interconnectivity between them. Um, so let me show you uh, firstly you know, areas where this, this wouldn't work so well. So if you, if you look at the eights here, you can see you know, if, this, if this is an eight, this is going to be an eight. And then sort of the chain, if you like, stops. Um, you know, you'd, have to, you'd have to make use of the fact that this being an eight forces it's doing something to fives throughout the grid if you like but it's not really doing anything with the, the eights themselves so that's that's the um, I suppose that's a hint for what you need to do to, to get into this puzzle from this point and what one needs to do is to, to, to consider an, a single number in the grid and how it chains through um, 
So for example, if we take this square here, you can see that there's a two or a five in this square. Now if we imagine this square for a moment is a five, what, what are the consequences of that? And the consequences are extremely lengthy, I suppose. You can see immediately that if, if this number is a five, this is not a five, this, this would in fact be a seven, this would be a three, this would be a five, now if this is a five, this is not a five, and you can I think quickly see then if this if this was a five there is nowhere a five can go in in this um, in this three by three box because this was these were five was eliminated from this column by this being five and it's just been eliminated from this square as well and there's no other place that a five can go this this square here has to be a seven or an eight um, now this this technique um, is called um, colouring I suppose because what, what you can do is you can propagate five through the grid jumping from uh, step to step along the chain um, so if you start by colouring this one in red for example you might colour color this one in green um, then so you're saying if this is a five this isn't a five then this would be a five so this one would then need to be red again, etc., etc., and you can come up with a whole uh, pattern of colours. And if you find that in any row, row, column, or box, you have the same coloured five, uh, you know that that is an impossible solution, and that would allow you to remove as a possibility all of the fives along that chain. So what I'm going to try and do now using the software is um, I'm going to shut up talking and try and show you the chain of fives that exists in this solution. So I'm just going to pause for a moment and not say anything. Hopefully you can see on the, on the screen now what I'm talking about and you can also see hopefully how that completely breaks the puzzle open um, because now we've got several squares that can only contain one digit and we can quickly finish off from this point. So this this sort of technique, I mean Mark, it's not that far off what Mark would call guessing or bifurcation, i.e. just picking a number and following it through, switching to pencil and, and forcing it out. But I think um, it's it's very slightly more sophisticated than that in that you you have to know what to look for. Um, in order to do it efficiently. Uh, I think I think what, what I showed before is if you had decided that eights were your place to bifurcate, you might not actually have got a solution out very quickly, but the fives you certainly would. So uh, I'm not going to just do the trivial part of filling it in. You can take my word for it that we would be able to do it from this point. We've spotted the hard piece of logic. Um, but this is a very good example, I think, of, of yet another logical technique, um, one that we haven't looked at on the channel before. Um, and I hope this is a helpful run through. And um, just as a final thought, uh, it occurred to me there might be another way of sort of expressing this slightly more simply. I mean, you've seen the colours on the screen there. You can see how you know, there's a great chain of fives, if you like, um, and wherever you end up with these colours in the same boxes, rows, or columns, you can you can eliminate that as a possibility. But even if you weren't looking for something quite so structured as that, there is there is a sort of short shortcut version that one can see just by focusing on I think four squares here. So if we um, if we notice in in this square in particular that there are three positions left that can contain a five, then it, it is possible. I think it's it's very simple to spot that there is a there is a chain of um, see if it lets me do that. Oh no, that's not going to work. Let's go back here. There is a chain of, of fives that's very easy to see starting in this square. So this square can be a five or an eight. This square can be a five or an eight. This square can be a five or an eight. And this square can be a five or a nine. Yeah, so there's just a very simple chain of five squares there, sorry, four squares there, which can only be one of two numbers. And it's very simple, I think, to see if this is a 5, this won't be a 5, this will be a 5. 
and then this won't be a 5, um, and vice versa. Now, if that's the case, what you can do is you can look at the, the chain ends. Yeah, so you, you, you either know this square will be a 5, or you know this square will be a 5. Either must be true. You know, and it, you know, you can check the logic there. We've done it, done it if this is a 5. If this is a 5 instead, this won't be a 5, this will be a 5, and this won't be a 5. Either way, one end, either of these squares will be a 5. Now, what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that any square in this Sudoku puzzle that can see both of these squares yeah, cannot contain a 5. And, of course, this square here, this square does see. It sees this one and it sees this one. Now, given that we know that this is a 5 or this is a 5, this cannot be a 5. It's impossible. And that would allow us immediately to write in a 9 here. And you can... Um, I think C, and that's going to really help with the puzzle. That gives us this, 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 eight, seven, etc., etc., um, and the whole thing will fall. So just by, um, so if you don't want to sort of focus on those big long chains, sometimes you can focus on much shorter chains and ask yourself the question: Okay, can anything see both ends of that chain? Because if it can, that can also solve these puzzles quickly. So just another thought there, in case it's interesting. So thank you for watching, and we'll be back next time on Crack the Cryptic.